But let's take it back to crypto real, real quick. We all know that meme culture rules in crypto. And what I'm going to propose to you is that meme culture really is just group visualization. So, you know, when you see a bunch of people posting positive messages about a project, what is that? Well, that's a form of group visualization and collective manifestation, whether you give it those words or not. And so when a meme resonates deeply in a community, it creates a shared vision for a desired future. And the best product projects are good at seeding information into a community that, that allows for those things to go viral. So an example of a meme that, that has kind of caught on over the years as, as I've talked to my community is this thing that I say over and over again, which is feel your big feelings. And, and, and so, you know, oftentimes in crypto, they, there is the sentiment is directly relational to price action. When price action is going up, you're, you're a genius and a god. And when price action is going down, you're a devil and, and, and a criminal. And one of the things that I've always tried to say out loud is that our responsibility as investors is to feel our big feelings about everything and recognize that we're in control of our financial health and future. We can get in and out of projects whenever we want. We have access to all of the same information as any as anyone else. And when we are in a place of, of emotional balance, we will actually kind of like in, in the movie Limitless, like we'll just see the data points better. You, you know, it's it's like when, when, when Neo puts his hand up when, when the agents are shooting bullets at him because the hallway turns in, in into computer code. When you're in a good state of emotional balance, you you have the the highest aperture of awareness available to you to be able to see all the data points and run the calculations in such a way that gives you an edge in the marketplace. And because we've got psychic gambler here here we 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 know that anytime you're playing games that that are reliant on calculations around expected value and and, and so that means that you're going to lose sometimes you're going to win sometimes but what you're trying to do is win more often than you lose and and so if you can just win 51% of the time on a long enough time scale you will become fab fabulously wealthy and and so you're always trying to shift your variance so maybe you win 52% of the time or maybe you win 55% of the time and if you can do this on a regular basis you have a huge edge in the marketplace and and you can outperform you know everybody around you but that requires that you know what's meant for you, that you actually see the information that is meant for you, and that you know how to make the connections. And, and so one of the interesting things about the group visualization that happens with meme culture is that it be, because it feels good to be a part of a group, you, you end up being more tuned into that project than maybe otherwise you would. And that means that you're going to see things earlier on and, and seeing things earlier on often in crypto is the edge that you need. You know, we'll talk a little bit uh, about this uh, as we go down through through the, the outline here. But one of the things that was interesting about the launch of the Kakanu meme coin was that you had this whole community within this NFT project called Chicken. And because the enthusiasts of Chicken were in the Discord day after day after day, many of us knew that that was happening on day one. And if you got into to the Kakanu meme coin, shout out, I'm wearing a Kakanu uh, t-shirt right now. Shout out, Bernie Gordon. If you got into that early, then, then you set yourself up for massive success because it just went on a rocket ship. And you could argue that if you were somebody who stayed in emotional balance about your relationship with with the chicken project, even though it had had, of course, had been on an emotional roller coaster and had had its ups and downs. But if you were able to stay in an emotional balance there and you focused more on the positive group visualization of the meme culture rather than than any of the tangible day to day details that that fluctuate on such a high variance that they really weren't the right things to focus on. Well, then you knew about this thing early. And then if you were really in alignment and, and, and had really aligned with a higher aim and vision for yourself, then you recognized what a big opportunity it was. You positioned your size properly and, and, and then, you know, li likely you, you did pretty well. What I'm trying to say is, is that even though we all have access to the same information and even though we all read the same information in crypto, 
our ability to act on that information and to get that intuitive hit that, ooh, I should do something about this, that is all about alignment. And that is, alignment is the thing that, that Neville Goddard was teaching. It, it, it was how do you get to a space where you actually see the things that are going to be important to you and, and you have the intuition to take action on that. And so as we've seen in crypto, the best memes, you know, the things that withstand the test of time are essentially the strongest collective visualizations. Be, be, because when you look at a project and, and you search out their hashtag on, on Twitter, it, if you just see hundreds, if not thousands of memes being posted every single day, well, clearly that's a strong community. And that's a community that is collectively building something in, in, in the ethereal creative space that they're calling into. And this is what a crypto projects require is, is it requires someone or a group of people to be a visionary, to consistently paint that picture so that people can walk around in a desired future. And, and, and so their emotional state will continue to spiral upwards rather than downwards. And you could argue that good marketing is good collective visualization. It's just that marketing often is creating that collective visualization at an unconscious level rather than a conscious one. And Neville Goddard taught that conscious visualization is is actually even more effective than unconscious visualization. So memes shape the narrative and can influence the direction and success of a, of, of a project simply be, because they, they help paint a future picture that people can start to walk around in. Excuse me, my nose is getting sweaty. Um, you know, how often have you been in a crypto project where you started to feel like a little uh lagging energy in the in the project and you're like uh i don't know is it time for me to get out of this like should i just take it take a loss and go somewhere else and then somebody posts like a banger of a thread or, or or somebody does a really good job of communicating a new aspect of the of the project or a new interpretation of the project or a new feature gets launched that that then gets memed all all over the place and you decide to to stay in the project well well that was somebody that was re-anchoring the collective visualization that there is this future desired outcome that we can all share together. And that outcome doesn't necessarily have to be price. Like I think, I think collective visualization in, in crypto can sometimes be better be, because people have big emotions around finances. And, and so it's hard to convince people that, that they're going to have infinite um, luck and wisdom in their finances if that hasn't been true in the past. But one thing that you can convince them of is that this is going to be a strong community. We're going to stay together. We're going to last the, the test of time. We're going to be able to ride the roller coaster together. And so if you focus on that, that can actually be a vicarious way to help somebody visualize the, the success of a project without focusing them on something that maybe they're out of alignment on, which is their finances. I digress. Let's move on to the next point. So some of the primary outcomes that Neville Goddard helped people create in his teachings, and and he has a ton of books out there. There's a, there's a book that I'm still reading through that's like 3,000 of his lectures called Neville Goddard Into the, Sil the Silence. And Neville Goddard went really deep down the, the rabbit hole in the latter years of his life where, you know, he actually believed that that Christ was our imagination and 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 that really the whole purpose of an incarnation on earth was for you personally to have the narrative arc of Christ and that you would go through the energetic manifestations of, of Christ and, and and so that's where where we get into some really esoteric stuff and I've got a video on on the channel called, called is Christ your imagination that you can check out excuse me if any of that's interesting to you but the thing to know if you're just dipping your toe into some of this manifestation work from Neville Goddard is that Neville Goddard first, you know, you know, a lot of people came to him because they were seeking financial abundance be it because money is this tool or, or this this encapsulation of energy that allows somebody to go and do the other stuff that they want to do. So Goddard's teachings have helped people manifest wealth by aligning their emotional state um, with their visualizations of desired financial outcomes. And in crypto, that obviously can translate to project launches, profitable investments, or you know, sustained community growth, uh, like meeting your vibe tribe and, and having a place that you can show up every day and feel like you're seen and heard. He also helped people uh, manifest 
personal empowerment and freedom. So he had an emphasis on personal empowerment. Um, and of course, that's a big part of the decentralized ethos of crypto, right? It, it, it's your keys, your crypto. But what does that mean? It, it means actually taking personal responsibility for the outcomes in, in your life. And, and when you recognize that reality is just a mirror that manifests based on your emotional and mental states, well, that's the deepest level of personal responsibility that, that you could have because now all of a sudden nothing external can affect you. The only thing that affects you is your own emotional state about those external things because when you shift the the emotional state internally, you know, I change the world by becoming what I want it to become. When you're able to do that, reality will render itself in such a way where your own personal experience will be akin to the thing that you've assumed to be. And then if your hero's journey is to be the hero that helps solve one of these big external problems, you'll be called into that journey, but but it won't be from a place of lack or scarcity or victimhood. It will from, be from a place of deep empowerment that you are the precise person. You're in the right place, the right time with the right people to be able to help solve this and spread a message of empowerment and freedom. All right. I guess uh, the last thing I have here on the list is um, that Goddard's principles can be applied to creating influential memes that embody the collective vision of the community. So how does it work? Well, when you go into meditation and you tune into what's happening in, in your body and you get to a clear cre creative space, and what I mean by that is if you sit there and you take a deep breath, and there's some tension or energetic heat in your chest or your stomach, before you should start visualizing, you should really deal with that energy that's trapped in your, in, in your body. And the more that you do this, the more that your body will be very good at serving up what's, what's ready to be released. So you just sit here and you just get curious about what's happening in your body. And right now I feel pretty emotionally clear, but a lot of times in the mornings, and that's usually when I do this practice, our dreams will trigger emotional states that are ready for release. And so one of the things that I do in the mornings when I sit with myself and I'm scanning my body for any discomfort, both energetically and, and physically, is I really try to remember my dreams or write down what my dreams were. And then I ask myself, what was I feeling in that dream? Be, because dreams are oftentimes less about the details and more about how did that dream make you feel? Be, be, because that's a mechanism for reality to say, hey, here's something in your energetic system that's ready for release. And if you'll just pay a little bit of attention to this and allow it to release, it will convert itself back into creative potential, at which point you can create the thing that you want to create in the world. So here we have that outlined as memes, and, and, and so that, that could be landing on the perfect idea for a piece of merchandise in, in, in NF Treasure. Shout out nftreasure.com. It could be the perfect thing, thing to, to help um, elevate the mood of all of the people that, that are following you on, on Twitter, the perfect thing to, to communicate some aspect of, of a project, the perfect video content, whatever it is, the perfect process, that will come to you once you're in a, a solid emotional state. Um, and And... It's it's that creative space that then allows us to apply some of these principles.